Welcome to 3 Minute Thoughts. In this 3 Minute Thought, we ask the question, what is AAC and who uses it? All communication goes beyond speech. It includes intonation, gesture and body language. It's something that everyone uses every day. But when we speak of augmentative and alternative communication, AAC, we're thinking more of different methods and modes of communication that enhance speech and help address problems with ordinary speech. AAC includes simple systems such as pictures, gestures and pointing, as well as more complex techniques involving modern technology. Technology is increasingly important as many of us communicate online by using images to enhance our written words. Emoji are an example of this. But for those where speech is impossible or very difficult, many use a more structured form called AAC. Some use AAC because their speech is difficult to understand, because of a physical disability or speech impairment. Others use AAC to help address communication challenges as a result of being deaf, having autism or another form of learning disability. AAC is used to help people express themselves and of course to understand. AAC offers many different tools, techniques and approaches to help people communicate with friends, family and peers. Whether at home, school, college or at work, AAC supports people to live independently and to take part in social and shared activities. There are many different types of AAC. Let's take a look at some of the most common. Signing is based upon gesture, a form of body language where movements convey messages through nodding and shaking our head, pointing or expressing displeasure. For many of us this is unconscious, but it adds a lot of meaning to our spoken words. In settings where speech becomes more difficult to understand, such as a noisy room, people gesture more so as to get their message across to another person. For those with impaired communication, these are an essential part of communication, not just enhancing speech, but providing the basis of their most effective means of expressing themselves. Such gestures and movements can be structured as a form of language, such as that used by many deaf people as sign language. Signing may add visual support to help people who have comprehension difficulties understand, and like speech does not require equipment. Signing can be always available and a very reliable way to communicate. But signing systems need everyone involved in a conversation to know the rules of the language in order to participate. Many people combine speech with signing, using the signs to add cues and clues and thus aid understanding and be helpful to everyone involved in the communication. The use of the written word or text can be extremely valuable as a form of communication. Books and words in the form of shared notes are easy to use. All we need is a paper and a pen. As one person writes down on a sheet, the other person in the communication can read them and understand what is meant. For others, text is more challenging and they may turn to the use of symbols to support their communication needs. Language uses words to represent meanings so people can communicate their thoughts to each other. Words are often spoken or written, but they can take other forms such as symbols. People who do not speak may use symbols as a way to express their thoughts. Symbols are used widely in everyday life as a kind of visual language. Road signs, care symbols on clothing or direction signs at an airport are examples of how symbols can convey information quickly and effectively. Symbols can be read regardless of the person's language or literacy skills. People with communication difficulties may benefit from using symbols to understand what other people are saying as well as to express what they want to say. Symbols are based upon graphics and images. They can communicate a range of concepts. They can be concrete, such as apple, or more complex, such as husband, or even abstract, such as love. There are many symbol sets available, including Bliss, or PCS, which are commercial, or Arasac and Tarasol that are open licensed. Open systems are very effective at offering different designs to address different languages and cultures. Technology allows AAC to be delivered in a variety of ways. In low resource settings, we can use no tech communication, 
which does not require any equipment. This can include body language, gestures, pointing, eye pointing, facial expressions, sounds and signing. Such no-tech systems can be limited or open to misinterpretation. So the use of low-tech systems, which do not require a power source, can be very beneficial. These might include pen and paper to write messages or draw, alphabet and word boards, communication charts or books with pictures, photos and symbols. They might include particular objects that are used to stand for what the person wants to understand or say. This is sometimes referred to as aided communication because additional equipment is required. High-tech communication systems need electrical power from a battery or from the mains and usually speak and produce text. They can range from simple buttons or pages that speak when touched to very sophisticated systems. Some high-tech communication systems are based on very familiar equipment such as mobile devices, tablets and laptops. Others use equipment especially designed to support communication. As communication systems evolve, the distinction between talking and writing is becoming blurred. Online chat uses speech-like sentences, but it's written as text. We all simplify our writing by abbreviating words or adding images to express mood or nuance. We all communicate differently depending on the audience and the setting. We all augment our communication. But for some, that augmentation is at the heart of all of their communication. To summarise, AAC, especially where it is combined with technology, gives many people a voice, a means to express their needs and desires. Without such a voice, it is difficult for any person to achieve their potential to live independently. In a future three-minute thought, we'll talk more about why technology is proving so important in providing those voices. Until then, thank you.